Hey everybody, it's me, and today, in celebration of Pride Month, and in celebration of my anniversary of coming out, which is June 8th, um, I would like to read to you guys and maybe react to the Facebook post that I made on June 8th, 2017, to come out to my family and friends. And let me tell you, it's a doozy. Before we start, I just want to say that if you're trans, right now it's really hard and things seem incredibly bleak. However, it is incredibly important to remember that trans joy is resistance and that we will survive this, we will pull through. So wherever you're at right now, just remember that you have people rooting for you right now. Not just other queer people, such as myself, but there are also allies out there who have the ability and the desire to help people like us. If you're an ally or you're a queer person who has privilege, it's important to help our queer brothers and sisters, our trans brothers and sisters, and do what you can to support the community. One of the ways that you can do that is actually sign up as a volunteer, and I'll put a link to that down below, where you can actually volunteer to help transport adults out of states that are no longer safe for trans people to a place where they will be safe. You can also volunteer to host people short-term or long-term who are fleeing states that are unsafe for them to be in currently. Let's begin. Now, a lot of you may or may not remember that I came out in 2017. Prior to that, I was posting YouTube videos about once or twice a week. I was also involved in the adult industry for a while at that point. And I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't come out very well, if I'm being completely honest. Now, this video that I'm making right now is inspired by one that no offense made and released uh, the day that I'm filming this video today, which is Wednesday, May 31st in the United States. And for me, watching him talk about coming out was such an awesome experience. Um, from what I understand, he had a lot of support. He had um, his parents were just incredibly understanding. And even though he was um, in a naval school and being forced to exist in a very confined atmosphere of presenting feminine with the feminine hairstyling and having to wear skirts, etc., cetera, um, it sounds like he still had a lot of support at home. And I think that is such a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I hope that whoever's watching this, if you are going to come out or you have come out, that the experience you have is one of love and acceptance and kindness. Um, I grew up very different from Noah, but also similar to Noah. I grew up in a very conservative religious home that was not very open to ideas of gender nonconformity or gender variance. It just wasn't a thing. Queerness was not really something we talked about ever in a positive light. And I actually remember an instance uh, prior to me coming out publicly where one of my family members actually remarked on Caitlyn Jenner as being a waste of uh, an Olympian, a waste of a human being, um, and lamented that I shared a name with that person uh, to me in front of a bunch of people at the dinner table prior to them knowing that I was trans. And that was just absolutely terrible but that was so commonplace in my home so even growing up i didn't really have a lot of opportunities to express masculinity not that i'm a very masculine person <laughs> but um you know it was a fight to get my hair cut short oh and when i cut my hair you know, i had definitely had people who thought i was a lesbian it was just it it was so beyond me at the time but I, I was like, hey, maybe you're right. Maybe I am lesbian. And I tried being with girls. And yeah, uh, jury's still out on that one. I still have yet to come to a conclusion on whether or not this is like for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely love cock. That's a thing. And it was definitely a point of contention that I would rather wear um, baggy clothing or traditionally considered masculine clothing um, and I experienced similarly to Noah when I hit high school, people encouraging me to feminize myself, to become more feminine, to grow out my hair, which I had just finally gotten to cut short 
to wear makeup, to wear um, more, you know, traditionally feminine, attractive clothing. And I found myself in that situation where that was what I was wearing. Now, I also uh, was in the Navy Junior ROTC program in my high school. So I signed up for that <laughs> erroneously thinking that I would be in um, BDUs. I was under the impression that I would be in androgynous or masculinizing clothing. And boy, that was a bit of a disappointment and a shock when I did actually get my uniform. And turns out in uh, spring and summer, we wear skirts and pantyhose and pumps. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> so I'm familiar with the hair the regulations, keeping your hair all nice and tidy back in a bun and all of these things. Super familiar with it. Similar experiences, but my Facebook post was not nearly as eloquent um, or <laughs> as gentle, if you will, as Noah's. And I wanted to share it with you guys because you know what? It's, it's one of those things that just I think is really worth talking about. So um, here it is. I actually went on my Facebook. I pulled it up through my Facebook memories and it has 53 comments. Um, and I'll, I'll read some of the comments here. Um, one of them says, good for you. Um, I can't explain how proud I am of you. Your happiness comes first. I'm so happy. You're happy. Your beautiful soul, no matter what sex of body you inhabit, be happy, be free, be you. Um, I love you as you are and for who you are. Also, we need to hang out and write some books and talk some more. Um, my position is never to judge, to seek, but to understand. I love you and whatever you do, that will remain the same. Um, one person said they won't pretend to understand my choices, but that they've heard so many things from so many people because they're a therapist that they know that life and choices are complicated and that their view is limited. So I, I experienced a lot of kindness and just love from so many just an outpouring of affirmation from so many people in my life um, and this was in 2017 so things were you know new very new the the topic of being trans gender nonconformity gender variance was so not talked about on the mainstream and for me to receive such an outpouring of love from so many people in my family, I was surprised, pleasantly, but surprised. I was surprised um, because so many of these people I had grown up knowing that they're Mormon or that they're Christian or that they're conservative. Um, and honestly, I, I don't think I deserved <laughs> such a wonderful response from so many people. From other members of my family, it was not so great, um, you know, and obviously we all know, because I posted it all over YouTube, I've since taken the videos down, the struggle that my parents and I had to reconcile um, our differences. As a result of this post, we've since, you know, come back into contact with each other and really begun working on our relationship and sitting down and understanding each other and really trying to combat polarization and radicalization. But uh, yeah, their response was more of what I was expecting. So just the love and outpouring that I received from all these other people was just beautiful. Right after this, I actually came out also publicly to my fan base on YouTube, on Twitter, and again, just received another outpouring of love and kindness and acceptance. Can you tell that I'm procrastinating reading this, uh, <laughs> this Facebook post? Uh, so now to the post. Here we go. Here's what I said. And I, I like I said, I, I could have, should have done better. But, you know, I like to look at my past self and say, could I have done better at that point? Maybe. But I know right now I could absolutely do better. So in the future, I'm going to endeavor to do better at everything, every interaction, you know, than this. So, all right, here we go. 8 June 2017, 2 o'clock in the morning, like a very rash decision of mine to come out after just feeling so depressed and sad and struggling so much with wanting to be loved and accepted.
by the people around me, but also not even knowing how to ask for that and being afraid that people wouldn't want to know or love or accept or understand me if I came out to them as trans and I stopped being a woman. Here goes. I guess I'm officially coming out. I'm sure I will lose friends and family over this, but honestly, I'm tired of hiding. So already I was preparing everyone and myself for the worst. I'm gonna lose people. I am a legal courtesan at a brothel outside of Vegas and I make porn for a living. That was the first thing that I said. And I'm sitting here looking at this thinking, I should have made two different posts. These two things are not tied to each other at all. But these were two aspects of my life that were so big and so um, important and heavy for me um, to keep a secret that they both were really weighing on me and I needed to talk about it. In addition, I'm trans, and then in parentheses, FTM. <laughs> and when I retire, I plan on undergoing a full transition. Oof. Okay, so, a couple of things. Uh, obviously, I started my transition before I retired. Um, and my reasoning for waiting proved to be accurate. You know, it's not nearly as profitable to be trans in the adult industry, uh, especially trans masculine, um, but also a full transition. I will be honest with you guys. I had such an internalized transphobia. Like I had such an internalized fear that I didn't even know I had it that people would look at me and because I didn't pass, they would think that I was lying. They, they would think that I was faking. Um, and I just, I wanted everybody to get it and just not, not have any room for doubt about me knowing who I am. I understand now that there is no such thing as a full transition and also the things that I wanted back then are not the same as what I want right now, to a degree. They're generally the same, but I'm not out here looking to get phalloplasty. That's too expensive, the recovery time is ridiculous, and there are so many risks that for me that's not something I'm interested in doing. But also, I'm not interested in waiting until I'm 30 to start testosterone. That was something that I needed for me specifically to be able to feel comfortable stepping out of my house, to feel comfortable stepping out of my bed um, in the morning. And the fact that I was willing to put my career over my own personal needs really, I think, indicates here just how scared I was of being myself publicly, like with anyone. Oh God, the next line. I want those of you who view this as a bad thing to realize it's no one's fault. I am happy, healthy, sober, and working toward my own personal goals in life. Now, I said that the way that I did because, and I was right, I had the sense that some people would try to blame my transness on external factors. I even recall at one point uh, sitting down with my mom after this post, maybe like two weeks later, and she asked me like, what did I do? Where did I go wrong, you know? And I didn't have the words at the time really to explain as so many other people have done so much better than I will even now that my gender identity and my gender expression are, yes, impacted by external factors, you know, environmental factors, what you grow up with, what you experience as being masculine or feminine, or if you live in a culture with more than two genders, what you experience as being those other genders um, definitely impact how you like present yourself and how you internalize what your gender identity is. Um, but also that my gender identity is, is mine. Like I own that, that is for me. And other people cannot cause me to have one or the other internal experience of my own gender. So yeah, next line. 
I hope you see things the way I do and appreciate what I do as a viable job choice and who I am as a viable human being. Taking that in for a minute. Viable human being. Because I'd grown up around rhetoric about queer people as being somewhat subhuman or demonic, I had this fear that people would equate my transness with those attributes of not being like a full, complete, whole human being. And we're in a situation right now in this, you know, in the United States where that's kind of how it feels uh, for a lot of people. So that would, you know, that sentence just kind of hit me a little funny as well. Um, Nothing has changed other than my life has improved immensely over the past year and a half I've been doing this. I wasn't clear there on what this is, but I meant sex work. And that was true. Sex work allowed me to have an opportunity to really explore myself and figure out at least introduce myself to myself and start to figure out who I was. Um, And it also made me a lot of money um, and afforded me the chance to have things that I wouldn't have otherwise had. Now, I did have a person in control of my finances and my day-to-day life, um, actually more like hour-to-hour life. So I was still severely limited, but even in that situation, I felt happier and safer emotionally uh, than I had in my parents' home growing up. So this statement is still true that I was, my life had improved. Um, I'm, oh, and I had gotten sober. So that was also important. Um, I'm still me. I've always been me. And not only do I love what I do and who I am, but I have a wonderful support system who believes in me and has watched me thrive and grow in success and excellence in life because of my choices. It was important to me to highlight the people who had, at that point in time, really allowed me to be myself. My support system was my um, now ex-partner and their parents and uh, the rest of their extended family. These people had known me since high school, since my sophomore year, and had become something of a second home to me. They were the first people I came out to. They were the people who I knew I could come to in any time of need or also to just celebrate life. And um, I always felt safe with them. I still do. Um, So I'm I'm really glad that that is still ringing true for sure. Um, And I felt a need to own like that it was my choice to be in sex work, which is half true. That was a half truth. Um, I did choose to be in sex work, but I was also trafficked. So there's that. My experience in the sex industry has been a very positive one and it's given me the courage to stop hiding the truth. That was very true. I had very few negative experiences in my work uh, throughout my entire seven year adult industry career. Oh, and I also practiced coming out to people like who I knew and cared about by coming out to my clients. That was absolutely a thing. And I found that it actually humanized me quite a bit to them in a way that you know, obviously alienated some, but brought others closer and more interested in getting to know me as a person, which was really, really nice. Okay, and the last bit here. To be clear, I am pro-legal sex work. I am also aware that plenty of people have had negative experiences in the sex industry. Sex work is not for everyone. Like any career, it takes a certain type to do the job and be successful and happy. I am independent and free. Again, I was not independent and I was (laughs) free to leave at any time but there were so many caveats on that. I'm also not pro-legal sex work, I'm pro-decriminalization, but I didn't know that that was what I was advocating for at the time. That's it though. I really didn't say much about being trans in my post about coming out as being trans. I believe I made some follow-up posts just stating like if anybody has any questions, they're willing, you know, I'm, I'm willing to answer them and just thanking people for the tremendous amount of support that I received due to that post. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a really rough time for me. Unfortunately, um, at the time, I was still not allowed to transition by the person who was in control of my life at that moment. So I still ended up having to wait for uh, 
two and a half years to be able to start hormone replacement therapy in 2019 when I was finally separated from that situation that I had been in. So that is my story of how I came out. I strongly, strongly advise if you're gonna come out that um, if you're gonna make a Facebook post, do it in a way that's less, here I am and if you don't like it, you can suck a dick. <laughs> and more about gentleness and excitement, you know? Bring people into it by like sh inviting them to share in this beautiful experience with you of learning who you are and discovering yourself, discovering more of yourself and just loving yourself deeply and becoming more authentic. And I think that that's just the best way to do it. And I wish I had done it that way. And also I will say like one-on-one -on -one conversations while overwhelming can go a long way. I digress. So that's it really. Um, I'm currently working on my memoir which I was supposed to have out in time for Pride Month this year, but I was unable to do, so I basically got another year to work on it, but I am seeking out alpha and beta readers who would be interested in reading not the entire thing, but portions and giving me feedback um, on my pre-edit and post-edit work. Um, I'm also interested in somebody who would be willing to do a cover design for me and I'm also interested in finding somebody to write a blurb. So if these are things that you would like to do, um, I'm open. I would love to start a dialogue, talk with you, shoot me a message through ilettercast.com. There's a contact form there. I'm also open to doing swaps for people who feel like they would like something in return for their time for commenting and on my work and helping me improve it. So I'm happy to do a swap where you read some of my stuff, I read some of yours, and we give each other feedback. Totally love that. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw today, um, hit that button down below. Subscribe, become a member of the Jackalope Tribe and earn your antlers. And don't forget to follow me on all the social media. It's at iLetterCast. And that is it.